This morning, you're my desire. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. Retainer of my past and present wrongs. Corner of my future days to come. To sing it, come on. Your presence is to me. Oh, Jesus, we seek your face. Your presence is to me. Let's see this a little bit. speak that out today. Lord, we desire you. We desire your presence, Lord. We're not here just for a service or just to sing songs, God. We're here to seek your face, the living God, the one true living God. Come on, you're the desire of our hearts, oh Lord. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Match this love.
that God seeks those that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. One need that God made known openly in the scripture is the need for true worshipers. Anytime we have the privilege to worship God, we are meeting His need. And there's no how you can meet the need of God on the altar of worship and go back without your own needs met. I believe God that even this moment of travel in the place of prayer, we are careful to give God what he's seeking for. We are careful to give God what he has asked for. He says seeking for true worshipers, those that will worship him in the spirit and those that will worship him in truth. So when we avail ourselves to meet this need of God, God in return will see to it that none of our needs are left unmade. Father, we worship you just because you are God, because you are king, and because you are the Lord of our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have worshipped him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll be leading us in our session of thanksgiving. It is very important to give thanks to God, even as I welcome you from your different locations to today's midday prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. In the book of Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 11, Psalm 78, verse 11, the Bible says, They forgot his works and his wonders that he showed them. I would like to ask you a sincere question. Has God shown you anything? Is there anything, anything notable that you can point to that this is what God did in your life? The Bible says what God showed them, they forgot. The wonders of God in their lives, to, they forgot about it. Any attempt for a child of God to forget the acts of God, to forget the wonders of God, is to also make your life or make make your project a forgotten issue before God. When you forget the works of God, when you forget the wonders of God, God forgets your welfare. We don't want to forget the works of God in our lives. There are many things he showed us. There are many things he has done in our lives. The Bible tells us in Psalms 103 from verse 1, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord and forget not all his benefits. When you forget the acts of God, when you forget the benefits of God, God forgets your welfare. The reason why some people have remained where they are is because they have consistently taken the acts of God for granted in their lives. I would like you to lift up your voice. Has God shown you anything? God has shown us mercy. God has delivered us from the traps of the enemy. God has helped us time and time and again I'd like you to join me as we appreciate God. And Father, thank you. I cannot forget your act. I cannot forget your benefit in my life. Let's go ahead and appreciate it. Father, thank you. We cannot forget your act in our lives. Even in this kind of season that we are in, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. Thank you for your numerous acts of faithfulness in our lives. Thank you, Father, for the benefit of life. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving us all our sins. Thank you for healing all our diseases. Thank you for safety that we've enjoyed. Thank you for families that are celebrating a safe delivery and an arrival of a new baby. Thank you for those that you have opened. Thank you, Father, for disappointing the devices of the crafty. We give you all the praise. We don't want our welfare to be forgotten by you. And therefore, Lord, we have come to reckon with your acts in our lives. We've come to reckon with your blessings in our lives. You are the glory and the lifter of our head. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But Father, in your infinite mercy, you have delivered us. We give you all the praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. In Jesus' precious name, we have given him thanks. Amen. Thanksgiving is a yeast of preservation. It's a spiritual yeast of preservation. Anytime we give thanks to God, we are certain that the blessings we are thanking God for are preserved and will not be wasted. Hallelujah.
Once again, I welcome you to today's Travel of Hana Midday Prayer on this platform. We are live from uh, Mombasa and uh, I welcome all of you. I thank God for bringing me back to Kenya safely. While on mission in Nigeria, I miss all of you and I'm grateful to God that I'm back home. Uh, Onyinye, Gloria Anaga, welcome. Edges Testimony, welcome. Elizabeth Obiero, thank you for joining. Welcome. Jennifer Timba, as I'm welcoming you, I also believe you are sharing this link. Please do not hesitate. Copy the link and share it because this season or this session is going to be fantastic and glorious. Juliet Chikanga, you're welcome. Abigail Milonde, Pastor Leah Gikaria, welcome. My sister, Evan Yola, you're welcome. Chow, here in the studio, welcome. Liz Mango, you're welcome. Lindsay, you're welcome. Vio Jones, you're welcome. Favor Afolabi, Minister Edith, you're welcome. Favor Mwamba, you're welcome. Sylvia Ongari, you're welcome. Feli Semi, you're welcome. Mumi Labi is online. You're welcome. Actually, she's speaking to us. Uh, Sister Esther, blessing, you're welcome. I welcome each and every one of you to this session today. Even those of you that I'm not able to see, just being wise, you're welcome in Jesus' name. Yes, we can see Mommy Labi. Hallelujah. Amen. Quickly, before I bring Mommy Labi, I want us to understand that the altar of prayer is a place where wrong are turned to right. It's a place where we come to God boldly, confidence, full of faith, so that uh, changes can be effected, most especially on issues that have not been well placed to us and on issues that are not really falling in line with the will of God for our lives. We had a wonderful time when we look at the topic uh, 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 what to do in the season that you are in. We dealt with offenses and testimonies have been coming in. Remember where we just read in Psalm 78, the Bible says they forgot the works of God. I want to plead with you, all the families of Travel of Hannah globally, stop sitting on your testimonies. There's no how we can be gathering to seek the face of God on the altar of prayer without notable testimonies of what God has been doing in our lives. Some people feel ashamed because they don't want their names to be mentioned. But even if you don't want your name to be mentioned, why can't you send in your testimonies so that glory can be returned to God? We have this testimony that came in all the way from UK. I'm not mentioning the name of the person. She said, good morning, ma'am. You are blessed. I want to appreciate you and ma'am Kubwa for the teachings on offenses. Since I came to the UK, this is the first time that my... This is the first time in my marriage I'm staying with my husband, like for more than one month under the same roof since we got married. So you can imagine the way I was used to being alone and just doing my things the way that seems right for me, forgetting that now I have to submit to the head of the house. I tell you, ma'am, offenses started creeping in and it was not good at all until I had that sermon. I listened to the first session, I, that is, she meant to say she, she was uh, present, she attended the first session, that is a part one of the teaching on offenses and the part two. And I knew the enemy wanted to bring unnecessary friction that may not even end up well. I prayerfully refused to be offended and not to be petty and adjust to the new season that God had brought me in. I am now at peace. And the devil has lost his grip on me and my marriage. Amen. To God be all the glory. Amen. She said, thank you, mom, for the travel of Hannah. Thank you, Mama Mkubwa, for one example you gave that was exactly my case. I give God all the glory. Amen. To God alone be all the glory. Amen. She said she prayerfully refused to be offended and she chose not to be petty. She decided to adjust herself after she had the teaching on uh, living a life void of offenses. We also received a testimony yesterday from a servant of God all the way from Nigeria. She said prior to this teaching, someone had really offended her and she was trying to see how she will retaliate. She was in pain, but somehow as God will arrange it, she was able to connect 
to travel of Hana midday prayer. And that was the same day we were dealing with the topic, living a life void of offenses. She said that was exactly where her healing, that was where her deliverance. She said she slammed the door against the spirit of offenses and she enjoyed her total deliverance. To God alone be all the glory. In case you are online, these testimonies are to encourage you or to, 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 to point to you that if God did it for them, he can repeat the same in your life. In case this is your first time of tuning in on this platform, there is no issue of life that you have brought before God that will not be attended by God. He said, O thou that heareth prayer, unto thee shall all men come. And then the last testimony, even though it was shared by one of our sisters, we have this platform that we connect by 5 a.m. to 5.30 to have a morning prayer. She was to lead, that is the Travel of Hannah WhatsApp prayer link. And she was the one to lead prayers. In her testimony, she said that when she was assigned to lead prayers concerning the work of her hands, she felt she was not qualified. But the pastor in charge insisted that you have to lead the prayers. And then it dawned on her that a laborer that laborers shall be the first partaker. And she compiled the prayers. She was to lead that prayer for three days. And before she was done with the three days leading of this prayer, the organization she worked for sent an email and, and she, was, uh, uh, she was told to represent their organization in South Africa. That was the beginning of her turn around. In her testimony, she said there are other qualified uh, uh, officers that will have been chosen. But because she availed herself, she led the prayers and she told God, the husband man that labored shall be the first partaker. God indeed fulfilled that in her life. To God alone be all the glory. Amen. Know that today is your own day. Amen. You can't afford to leave, leave this platform without your own testimony. As you key in to meet with this God of the travel of Hannah, just like he did it for them, he will yet do it for you in the name of Jesus. Remember, God told us that the snare is broken and we are escaped. That you have outgrown whatever have caged you before now. After today's session, whatever you thought you were not qualified to do, whatever you thought that you didn't have the capacity to venture into, because the snare is broken by the word of God that will be receiving today and through the prayer session that will be going into, God will push you into your next phase in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen and amen. Haven't had the testimonies and haven't prepared ourselves, I wouldn't want to waste much time. I want us to prepare our spirit in one minute and talk to God and Lord speak to me. As your servant comes online, Father, speak to me. That every prophetic declaration that will be made, I prepare my heart as a fertile ground that I will receive it and that it will be fulfilled in my life. I prepare myself to receive from you even this afternoon. I prepare my heart to be a fertile ground, to be a fertile ground, to receive your word. Thank you, Father. Use your servant to minister to me today. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. With Jesus' joy, I want you to make welcome none other but Pastor Blessing David Labi, Mama Mpupua, all the way from Abuja, Nigeria. Let's put our hands together for the Lord as we receive her. Amen. Over to you, Ma. It is always a joy having you on this platform. You're welcome, Ma. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I count it a great privilege as given to me by God and his servant, Pastor Mrs. Pebo Wale Joseph, to be a participant. I am also a participant on this platform and of the truth God has been so, so faithful. There is no way I feel more for that God won't give me an evidence. So we celebrate God for this platform, the travel of Hannah, and we celebrate you, Ma, for availing yourself to be used by God. We thank God for the grace that is at work in your life and upon your life. Travel of Hannah is gone global. And for everyone that is connecting, and that's how your testimony will globally be shared in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I believe the network is okay. 
the network has to be okay in jesus mighty name praise the lord please i would like to just know you can hear me i would like to know you can hear me hallelujah hallelujah amen thank you so much ma for this privilege God's servant told us that God told her that the snare is broken. And this morning, this afternoon, from wherever you are connected from, I don't know the snare the enemy might have put on you or put around you. I want you to understand that after today's broadcast, you are returning back as free as the birds in the air in the name of Jesus Christ. So my topic today, as inspired by the Spirit of God, is titled, The Snare is Broken. And I would like someone to say to herself, even as you write it down, document it, that the snare over my life, the snare over my children, the snare over my marriage, the snare over my career, the snare over my business is broken. Once God says the snare is broken, he means what he is saying the snare truly is broken but sometimes you discover that one when a snare is broken especially when you have a chin and you tie the liquid to an object for a while even when you loosen the chicken the chicken will still be moving around revolving around the area where it has been tied for a while why because the language of liberty the language of freedom sometimes is not understood in psalms 124 verse 7 the bible says in psalms 100 and psalms 124 verse 7 that our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler the snare is broken and we are escaped. The snare is broken and we are escaped. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Someone might be here and will say, I am not ensnared. I don't even understand what it means to be snared. To be snared can mean to be confined, to be confined to a particular position sometimes you can be spiritual walking around and you might not know that in the realm of the spirit you are confined by the enemy confinement can mean a trap confinement can mean an imprisonment so a snare means a confinement to be kept not longer at liberty in a particular position and you cannot do anything about it because once you are ensnared you don't have the power to deliver yourself we must understand and establish it as a truth again that the reason the enemy ensnares you and i is because he knows that we have a glorious destiny we sing it and we say it that it is colorful and it's bright that is talking about my destiny and i must get there but do you know that i've come to realize that no matter how colorful and how great your destiny is it's not everyone that has a colorful destiny that gets to the colorful destination sometimes there are limitations sometimes there are hindrances sometimes there are blockages the enemy just ensures he wants to stop you in as much as god has given you and i a dream for greatness in as much as god has given us a vision for greatness in as much as he has given you and i a head above others he, the devil also have anointed a man or a woman somewhere to ensure that your destiny is taught i believe i'm not talking alone are we together Please let me have a witness that you are with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you. <laughs> so just like I said, in as much as your destiny is great, 
the devil also have put one agent of his somewhere to ensure that he stops you have we forgotten joseph had a dream a dream that showcased over his life a great destiny and the bible tells us that joseph went ahead sharing his dream sometimes it happens when you have an idea you share it with relations you share it with friends out of excitement sometimes even when you have been maybe waiting for the fruit of the womb for a while and then it happens that god has visited you you look out for someone to share with remember mary was visited by an angel but the only person mary was led to talk, to tell the encounter of her visitation was elizabeth and elizabeth because she was spirited elizabeth because she was one of the handmaiden of the lord elizabeth because she had connection with god but sometimes out of excitement we sit down and we forget the cycle where we share certain details about the things god is unveiling to us and most times release this information the devil picks it up and gets us ensnared and ensnarement can come in different ways it can come in the area of bitterness like we said uh offenses like we said but sometimes it can come in the form of sickness sometimes it can come in the form of a delay in your marital destiny sometimes it can come in the form of you having not a child to showcase even after getting married sometimes it can come in the area a challenge like mine at a time in my life i discovered that the enemy came with a snare to stop me by introducing the passing on of my husband that was a snare i tell you the truth because at that time when this incident happened i lost my bearing i didn't know how to start to talk to people again i didn't know how to start to tell people that god is indeed faithful i lost touch with the word god is faithful even though i knew that god is faithful but i didn't know how to explain that god is faithful i didn't know how to explain that god can come through for you in a situation where you have faithed and have believed him i didn't know how to talk to people again so the devil was aiming at one thing to silence this voice so that this voice will not have a platform to stand again the devil was aiming at one thing to steal my confidence to stop me from standing on the platform god has prepared for me to tell people that he's faithful i had to fight through to 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 come to the state where i am because it was a snare i tell you the truth i was almost losing touch with so many things yours might not be like mine yours might be that you have gotten married and then you have maybe explained to people around you that i am married maybe after a delay in getting married and the next thing you are waiting for is the evidence that the fruit of the womb is coming and yet nothing is coming forth the enemy will also want to silence you by introducing the snare of barrenness the snare of unfruitfulness a lot of believers pay tithe a lot of believers serve in the house of the lord when they lay hands on businesses, sometimes you see all manner. The, the actualization of scriptures that say, whatever your hands find it to do shall prosper, seems far away. That you can't hear that. How does it mean that if I serve God, He will bless my the works of my hand, He will bless my bread, and He will bless my water, He will cause me to pro prosper in the land, He will not allow me to cast my young. Sometimes you lose touch. To explaining such when a snare is introduced around your destiny or around your life so joseph came to a point that he was ensnared number one in the pit he was ensnared the second stage in potiphar's house all of this peace that he found himself the first p was the pit the second p was the potiphar's house the third p was prison and in prison Joseph's royal uh, clothing, number one, the royal clothing was removed even before the period. That was 
wanted to remove the identity because the royal court that was placed on Joseph was the one pointing to him that you have a future that is colorful. The more he was looking at the court of many colors, it was explaining to him how colorful his destiny is. And then the devil used his brethren to strip him of that court of many colors. And after a while, the pit where he could not longer see. I don't know the state and position you are. Maybe God might have said to you so many things. Maybe God might have shown you so many things. And now you find yourself in a pit. You find yourself in a pit. It's like the story of Isaac who went down Egypt. You might have found yourself in a position where you can't see again. Abraham found himself in that kind of state. The Bible says Abraham lost touch. God had to bring him out and said said to him, "From where you are, look northwest, east west, south west, to as far as your eyes can see. Have I given unto you?" So Abraham's vision had to be revived again because a time came he was snared. Look at me, a great man of God. I've gone into my concubine, Haggai, to sleep with her. That shows I'm losing direction. My wife can't give me the promised child that God had said or had promised. He lost focus until God had to bring him out. So I don't know the pit where the enemy has ensnared you. This afternoon, by the authority that is in the blood of Jesus Christ, you are coming out. You are coming out and you are coming out stronger. You are coming out better. You are coming out more glorious and you will fulfill destiny so joseph lost it all somehow he might have said ah god have forgotten me maybe this dream that god showed me this vision that god showed me will never come to pass but little did he know that there is a god that walks through the process when you are sneered the Bible says in the time of life, according to the time of process, that shows that when there is a snare, goes through, God allows a process of one stage to the other to work out your liberty. Woman, you are liberated. Man, online today, you are liberated. So it doesn't matter what the enemy is showing you. When God says the snare is broken, it is broken. Joseph found himself in prison. In prison, I believe the clothing he came into prison with was removed and a prison cloth given to him. Listen to me. His name was no longer called. Prisoners are never called by their name. They are called by numbers. And that's why in scriptures, some women that were snared by certain issues of life were never mentioned by them. It was the name of the challenge they found themselves in that was used as their name. We have one the woman with the issue of blood. That was an identity of an ensnarement that the enemy brought upon her, and it became a name. Blind Bartimaeus. That 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 challenge he had became a, a, a description of his personality. We have also uh, uh, this woman. The woman, the woman that is bound with the spirit of infirmity, her name was never mentioned, but her challenge became her name. Till today, we don't know her name. We don't know her name. So you must understand that that was the state Joseph found himself. So how can a man think of actualizing destiny? How can a man think of the word of God becoming alive in his life when he is in that kind of a place? As many of you that are into poultry or keeping one uh, uh, chicken or the other, you will understand when um, uh, a cage is made and then these chickens are kept in a cage. They don't have access to coming out. It is you that cage them that determines when they are fed. It is you that cage them that determines when they are served water. It is you that cage them that determines when you open the cage. But you know one thing? The Bible says even when a lawful captive is kept, there is a judge in heaven that goes in the night season to unlock the cage. So no matter how safe or self-guided or self-guided you are keeping your cage, there, the night it will come, you will break the cage and then you will free those cars. 
So this afternoon we have come as those thieves that have been prepared spiritually by God to unlock and release as many that the enemy has kept captive in the name of Jesus Christ. Like I said, one of the aim of the enemy is to ensure that you do not see, neither will you fulfill the destiny that God has set before you. In the book of Luke chapter 1, the Bible painted the story of one of the priests of the Most High by name Zachariah and his wife Elizabeth. Remember the Bible says these people were righteous before God. They were devoted. And possibly you are online. You have also this testimony, a devoted a child of God, one that serves God in season and out of season. That was the kind of testimony Zachariah and Elizabeth had. But look at it. Yet yoked with barrenness. Barrenness became a snare. So no matter what Zachariah is to tell the people God, he can't tell them anything good about fruitfulness because he had no testimony in that area. So when the enemy brings a snare, he wants to shut your mouth. He wants to shut your voice. He wants to make you lose confidence in talking about an aspect and, or, or maybe a, of talking about that aspect, the faithfulness of God about that aspect in, to another person. So no matter what happens, Zachariah can't talk when people are talking about their children. But a day came. Say with me, a day came. The master, the one that owns the key of life and death, came and met him in the place of his assignment. That's why no matter the same enemy is presenting to you or have presented to you, don't leave your service post. Don't leave your duty post. Keep serving because one day is one day God will send a deliverer. And as he was serving, the Bible says an angel came with the good news. And not long, John the Baptist came. So today I decree in the name of Jesus that if you are snared with uh, the issue of barrenness or no productivity or no fruitfulness in an area of your life, the angel over travel of Hannah is being sent to lose you from that yoke of unfruitfulness. In the name of Jesus, beginning from today, your fruitfulness level and status will begin to show in the name of Jesus. What again can we say about Abraham and Sarah? Very obedient. When God says move, they move. When God says return, they return. They were so obedient. And yet, the word of God sent to them kept them in one position for 25 years. I don't know the word God might have said to you. And maybe the past years, you have been waiting. And maybe you have lost focus. That this that God has said to me will never come to pass. I have good news for you. That that good God has said concerning you will come to pass in this season. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, even though it tarries, wait for it for it shall surely come to pass it will no longer be delayed because you are in your season of liberty no matter what god has said will come to pass because you are soaring like eagle the eagle can never be stopped by any storm the eagle can never be stopped by any bird no matter the storm the eagle flies no matter the eagle does not even fly the eagle soar you will begin to soar over every challenge of life in the name of jesus christ because it is your season look at the story of joseph from the book of psalms 105 the bible says in verse 15, in verse 14, in verse 17, sorry, and he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. He sent a man before them. So Joseph was sent before his family. But look at the snare that almost got Joseph out of destiny lane. The Bible says in verse 18, whose feet they fought with fetters. He was laid in iron. All of these are enslavement to they are to stop you have you ever seen this cow two that are yoked together one can run faster than the other so when 
the enemy locks you with a snare, you can't run out of his reach. That was the position Joseph found himself. But look at verse 19. The Bible says, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. When God tries you, it is so that he can trust you with what he is in the area in which he is trying you. When God tries you with lack, it is that there is abundance coming your way. Is that riches is coming your way that will make you a voice in the financial institute, in the financial world. So when you are going through the snare of lack and want, rejoice. It is because you are coming out as a an institute of finance, an institute of abundance. You are coming out as one that is a voice that will be a voice over the nations of this earth. When it comes to money, the Bible says the word of the Lord tried him. You can't be, you can't have a testimony until you are tried. So that trial you are going through is so that God will establish for you a testimony. Because trials too are sometimes the snare prepared by the enemy to carry you away. And the Bible says in verse 20, the king sent and loose him. Even the ruler of the people and let him go free. So the king of kings has spoken through the lips of his daughter that you are set loose. You are set free. Therefore, there shall be no more ensnarement. There shall be no more confinement in the name of Jesus Christ. So someone this afternoon is leaving the prison of black and want, is leaving the prison of unfruitfulness, is leaving the prison of of lack of marital breakthrough is leaving that prison when it is your time everything will turn what can we say again in the book of john chapter 11 the story of this man that died john chapter 11 incidentally his name too is called uh, lazarus the Bible says now a certain man was sick. Sickness became his snare. John chapter 11 verse 1. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. I don't know the sickness that is on you. I don't know the name of that sickness that is on you. I don't know the snare of sickness that the enemy has put on you. But hear this tonight, this afternoon. The Bible says, when Jesus heard in verse 4, he said unto them that this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified. So I want you online to understand this, that no matter the voice the enemy is saying to you, no matter the doctor's um, verdict, against your destiny that sickness is not unto death it is so that god will showcase his glory so rejoice and be exceedingly happy but look at it after jesus have said the sickness is not unto death the enemy came and killed lazarus in verse 39 when jesus came he was already dead, buried for three days. Look at it. This man that was told or that a statement was pronounced over his life, this sickness is not unto death, died, was buried, they couldn't wait again. And then they brought a stone and put on the grave so that even when the earth opened, the stone wouldn't allow Lazarus to come out. <laughs> I don't know the stone, oh. the enemy has rolled against you. Ah, one time I was preparing to be married, and then a sister rolled a stone against me. She told my late husband then that this lady you want to marry is always in church. She doesn't have capacity to take care of a husband. Please don't marry her. If not, you will die of hunger. And incidentally, he didn't tell me that this was what this sister told him. And then I so much loved this sister that every of my advice, I was going to her to talk to me. And then one day I told her, I said, since my husband's paper 
was not as much as mine. This is what I'm deciding that after the wedding, I will be doing this, this, this in the house. Hear what she told me. She said, don't use your money to take care of a homo. Don't waste your money on men. Men don't appreciate. I didn't know she had told him not to take care of me, not to marry me, because I'm always a church in church. In fact, I was called church girl. I won't take care of him. And now she's telling me not to use my money to take care of him. So if I follow her advice, I won't take care of him. And at the end of the day, it will look like this woman is not responsible. She's not a virtuous woman. Am I saying the man won't bring in his impute in terms of the welfare of the home? He will definitely bring in. And then one day as I was talking to him, he said to me, you trust this sister so much. This is what she said. She rolled a stone, but God didn't allow the stone hinder him from marrying me. He said, so if I had missed you, this is all the care. I can care for Africa. So this is all the care I would have missed. So God put care in me. So she rolled the stone against care so that this man would run away. Whatever stone the enemy has rolled against you this afternoon by the blood of Jesus, we declare it roll away and we command that you be loose from whatever kind of grave the enemy yes, has Jesus. you. And then the Bible says that Jesus loosed Lazarus. He commanded Lazarus comfort. So I decree in the name of Jesus standing on the grace of God's servant, Pastor Favor Wallet Joseph, that in whatever kind of situation the enemy has kept you, he has said the same is broken. Therefore, you are loose comfort now in the name of Jesus. This is the season for your marital breakthrough. This is the season for your financial breakthrough. This is the season for your conception. This is the season for your career breakthrough. This is the season for your academic breakthrough. This is the season for your business breakthrough. This is the season for you to be made whole. No more sickness. Rapport for your body. My people want to make it clear. The purpose of a snare is to not to allow you to be showcased in the marketplace. Whatever has stopped your career, finding expression in the marketplace, we said no to it this afternoon. The snare is broken. Go take your place. Go take your place. Go take your place. Stopping me, declare it over your life. Nothing stopping me, nothing stopping me, nothing hindering me. Makara kote ye le bara kosa katalia malibozon tolia in the mighty name of Jesus. One night I woke up. After step and tell me what can you tell me in the game? <laughs> you have nothing to tell them. Just shut down. You have no ministry. Ministry has ended. You are fond of sharing how God. Um, supernaturally, my marriage was like a supernatural marriage. How God supernaturally gave you a husband. What else can you say now? Is he here and on God? Never, he is not. But at that time, I was wondering, I said, God, are you truly there? Are you alive? Or you have gone on vacation? Let me know. I need a visa to follow you to where you are. But one day I got up. Say with me, I got up. You must get up. Oh. The woman that was bound with the spirit of infirmity. I believe she might have come across this scripture that says the snare is broken. That was why she came next to church. She said, No, today you can't stop me. I am going to follow. What she had about Cotonia. And I began telling myself, I will look at myself in the mirror and say, Woman, you are not where you are. Woman, nothing can stop you. Woman, you are still a voice. You have a voice. Woman, you can say it. Woman, you can declare it. God has not failed being faithful. God has not stopped being faithful. When he says a thing, he will do it. I said the match is not over. I determine when this match will stop. I determine who goes back home with the golden cup. I am returning back with the golden cup. Satan, you can't take it from me. Satan, you can't tell me I'm a loser. No, I am not. I am a winner. The Bible says from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered violence and only the fallen take it by force. If the snare is broken, take your liberty by force. If the snare is broken, take your liberty 
by force. If the snare is broken, take your freedom, take your evidence by force. I round up with this testimony. Last year, I told someone, I said, go buy a wedding ring and bring it. And then we'll pray. My sister and I prayed over that wedding ring. She said, Mommy, this is my last bus stop. I am tired of doing this and doing this and doing this. When she was talking, tears filled my eyes. I said, God, your daughter has said, this is her final bus stop. If you do not appear now, she would have brought, brought in the snare of delaying marriage. It was not demanded at all, at all. I tell you the truth. And then we kept on. I said, put on the ring. In the morning when I'm having my devotion, I said, give me the rings. The ring, she came to the house. I said, give me the rings. I will bring the rings and place them on my bed and begin declaring. I said, God, this is your daughter's last bus stop. She must return back with a testimony. Do you know after some month, somebody came. And the man that came, everything she has prayed for in God, uh, uh, for in a husband, is what is in that man. So the snare is broken. Her liberty is established. You will, full, you will soon hear the full details of this testimony very soon. Our time is well spent. Over to you, Mommy Wale Joseph. Let's go. Thank you so much. As many that are online just begin to bust in the spirit. You need to strike now while the iron is still hot. Make God servant said while she was ministering that that day, that particular day, she stood up. When the snare is broken, you are forbidden to remain on the same spot. When the snare is broken, whatever has held you bound must lose its grip over your life. You'll be lifting up your voice. This is the moment that I arise and arise to move to where I belong. When the snare is broken, you must walk into where God has ordained for you. God has ordained a bigger place for her, but the enemy was asking her, is God still faithful? But she said that particular day she arose. I am arising. Is there anyone that is arising? If the snare is broken, you are not permitted to remain in that region. If the snare is broken, you must arise. already. The grip is loose already. Ah, the snare is broken and I'm escaped. My soul is escaped. My soul is escaped. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. When the snare is broken, notably, you begin to enjoy the help of the Lord. In the same verse of scripture, our text, you look at verse 8, verse 7 said, our soul is escaped. The snare is broken. Our soul is escaped. Then verse 8, sorry, verse 7. Then verse 8 of Psalms 124. Please give me verse 8 of Psalms 24 so that we can read as we round up. When the snare is broken, one of the notable things you experience from verse 7. From verse 7, the Bible says, Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. It said the snare is broken and we are escaped. Verse 8 now goes further to say, Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heavens and the earth. The snare is broken. You will enjoy the help of God in an unusual dimension in the name of Jesus Christ. When the snare over Jabez was destroyed, he saw the help of God that ushered him into the realm of honor. Because the snare over you is destroyed and is broken. 
you are hereby ushered into the reign of ceaseless help from above in the name of Jesus Christ. What you have been looking for will begin to look for you. What you have struggled looking for over the years will begin to look for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In 1 Chronicles chapter 4 verse 39, the Bible says, and they went to the entrance of Gera or Gedo, even unto the east side of the valley to seek pasture for their flocks. Verse 40, it says, and they found, and they went, and they found. When the snare is broken, you enjoy an uninterrupted progress. You will go and you will find. And they went. What were they looking for? The Bible says they were looking for pasture for their flocks. <laughs> when the snare is broken, whatever you are looking for, because the help of God is readily available, you lay hold on it. Amen. Look at it. It was not a counterfeit that they found. What they looked for was what they found. And they found fat pasture and good, and the land was wide quiet and peaceable <laughs> whatever you have been looking for now that the snare is broken whether it is job whether it is promotion whatever it is that you have been crying for on the altar of prayer as you go you will find it you will go and you will find you will not go and return empty-handed you will not go and return disappointed. Amen. I release you. I join my faith with God's servant. Distance is not a barrier. Yes, Lord. We release you to go and find what you are looking for. Amen. Because the snare is broken and your help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I release you. I join my faith. Ali Bikusuta Mrakete Libru Sutaya. As you go, you will find in the name of Jesus Christ. Your search will no longer end in futility. Your search will no longer end in frustration. So shall it be for you in Jesus' mighty name. And they went and they found. And you go and you will also find in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. What a powerful session in God's presence. I'm telling you, while God's servant was talking about the stone, I was pointing to the people in the studio. <laughs> Last night, I think about 12 midnight or so, this was the scripture that kept coming to mind. Mark 16, 4. It said, and when they look, they saw that the stone was rolled away. Even though it was a great stone, when they looked, they saw that it was rolled away. The stone that the enemy have push towards your destiny just to make sure you are halted just to make sure you suffer stagnation that stone has been removed they say as they looked the stone has been rolled away no more barrier yes. no more confinement go and you will find so shall it be for you in Jesus mighty name amen, amen. thank you mommy Labi. I felt like jumping where I am as you were ministering you have ministered to me I am so blessed and I know that testimonies shall abound to the glory of God just like that day you stood up and you're still up on your feet so shall we all remain up on our feet to pursue the mandate that God have placed in our hands in the name of Jesus your strength man, shall never be abetted. You will never see a better yesterday. Each day shall be a plus to the previous in your life and ministry. In Jesus' mighty name, we love you greatly and we celebrate you. And in case you've been watching and you are not yet born again, how can you exit this session without recognizing this God that walked the process with a man or a woman that is ensnared? Only God can bring you out of every cage of life. And the first step that moves God to take you out of every cage of life is by you recognizing him as the Lord of your life. I'd like you to repeat this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. 
I know you died for me, so today I recognize the work you wrote over 2,000 years ago so that I can enjoy freedom. I renounce the devil, I renounce his ways, I renounce his, his, his art. By this prayer of faith, I declare that I'm now born again. Jesus is my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Congratulations wherever you are in case you made this confession. You are now a child of God. Details are on this platform. Send us a text message, WhatsApp message, or even a call. We have our team members that will attend to you immediately and you will be given the direction to where our church is located. Also, it is good to know that our church is not only the Bible-believing church. Wherever you are, in case our church is far away, you can locate other Bible-believing churches. Feel free and be bold to share this encounter with the pastors so that you can be well mentored. Congratulations because the snare of sin is broken over your life and you have escaped. Your help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. It is time to honor the Lord with our substance. It is only a thief that walks into a restaurant, sit down, and then he's well served. And after he's done with eating, he tried looking for how to sneak out of the restaurant and run away. It is only a thief. But a proper man, a proper woman, makes sure that they settle the bill before they walk out. The word of God is a spiritual meal. We have been well fed by God and we have presented our request before him, trusting that he has heard us. We are not bribing God. We are not paying for the word we have received. We are just acknowledging God with our substance that Lord indeed we are grateful that we thank you for being mindful of us. Thank you Father for speaking to us powerfully through your servant. This is our offering of appreciation. This is our offering of love. Receive it, O oh God. Use it to advance your kingdom. And in return, let everyone that is parting with their substance, Father, see to it that the, 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 the vacuum left does not remain empty. Fill it up with more than what they have given. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Mommy, let me thank you. I can't thank you enough. From my heart, I celebrate you. I love you always. And it is always a thing of joy and privilege that uh, I am your sister and that we are serving God together. My prayer is this, that God will keep us stronger, healthier, to keep on doing what he created us for. And on that fateful day, we will stand before the Lord and say, Father, it was a privilege. And thank you for counting us worthy to do this thing together. I wish you well. And for everyone that tuned in today, we dearly celebrate you. Thank you for being part of Travel of HANA Global Community. Like I mentioned at the beginning, don't sit on your testimony. There is no testimony that is small. Stop, you know, stop waiting until something big happens. God is watching your attitude with that one that you call small to determine whether you will ever see uh, his hand in a bigger dimension. Otherwise, we love you from the studio. We celebrate you and we look forward to seeing you again the same platform, same time next week. My sincere apologies. We have taken like nine more minutes beyond our, uh, our schedule time of closing. We sincerely apologize. We love you and we celebrate you. Hallelujah. Bye-bye.